I'd like to apologize to you. We just changed to studios, and so with that came some technical hitches there, and there, but we're fine. And as you can see, uh, the signals are clearer. You can find that the studios, you can even see the streets of Uyo, wherever you are. You'll be able to you see some traffic light here just behind us in Uyo. I'd like to thank um, Power City International. They really are a global church. Okay, Papa has joined me after his very powerful first round. He joins me here to finish what he started. My name is Michael Bush. Good evening from Uyo, Nigeria. And now, Papa, the global Papa. Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. Dr. Evgeny <laughs> Good evening. Papa, so nice to see you. Good to have you so here Papa tonight. Was, yes, Papa, we spent the night in um, Zambia. Yes. So we just launched from Zambia quickly. Sure. Our first um, shot comes from Kitwe, Zambia, and Leonard Bess arrived. Good evening, Papa and Mr. Bush, the one who pronounces all names correctly. Great grace abounds to you for the job you're doing in the body of Christ. One thing, Papa, that breaks my heart about the people that condemns you and uh, your teachings is that they think they know better, but they don't know anything. The message of Christ that Papa Damina teaches opens our eyes to see life in its right perspective, both in this life and the life to come, as Apostle Peter puts it in his epistle, Second Peter 1, 3 to 9. For me, ever since I started listening to you, Papa, my life has become meaningful, enjoyable, and I have the reason to stay longer in this life because living in this life, in this world, is about Christ. What you teach us are the realities of the New Testament, and if a person can just allow what you teach to find expression, everything changes. It's a pity that this, they think they know, but uh, what they know can never ever open their eyes to see and know the true character of God the Father. But I mean, you are a gift to this generation. Having the knowledge of what Christ has done for us is wonderful. Truly, you are raising tabernacles of God all over the world. Now, Papa, I have a question about the Nazarites. What was it about? That is uh, something great grace about to you. Uh, what was it? Was it about something? Yes. What was it all about? I think the, the the Nazarites, or I don't know. Well, Nazareth was where Jesus was born. You know, Nazareth. He was from Nazareth. He was a Nazarene. Okay. It's just part of the protocol of events that led to the redemptive plan of God. That's mm. what it is. Part oh. of the protocol. Okay, Papa. Still, quick one from Zambia. Still, greetings from Kitwe. Still, Kitwe, and this time from Kennedy Paul Luo Jr. He says the thirty days of glory has been in your word, Papa. A blast and transformational for me. Since my birth, I've never had such an encounter of words such as you preach. It is phantom and glorious. Indeed, I would never ever be the same again in my life. It's an epic experience. I'm actually thirsty for more. This is a message I need to share with my generation and the ones to come. I need more of your material. It's, a, um, it's actually all the soterias from day one. Thank you and God bless you. Greetings to you, Papa Damina and Mr. Bush. May the Lord continue to bless you richly and mightily. My name is, okay, that is from... Um, Kennedy Paul Lu in, in Zambia. Oh, Kennedy, thank you. Bless you again. Keep following. Okay, still in Kitwe. We're staying in Kitwe tonight, um, longer than necessary. This one comes from Richard and says, um, Papa Damina and Mr. Bush, you have both been a blessing to my family this generation. I've been following you for the last two years. That cannot be me now. It's about you, Papa. And I can't explain the level of spiritual growth I've attained following your teachings. I'm truly grateful for your obedience to the gospel. Doctor, I've been married for five years. We're yet to have a first child. We've done everything within the bounds of marriage and still no sign. With your teachings, I'm only more and more focused and fixed on Christ. I believe in Christ. I have everything. My wife and I have also visited health facilities who say that there is nothing wrong with us. Is there anything that we should do in order to have our own child? Can this be a function, by the way, of the lack of faith on our part to receive from a giving God. Looking forward to hearing from you, sir. Well, Richard. Well, it's not. Just receive. Receive right now. Receive that miracle of childbirth. Receive it for both you and your wife. We command your bodies to, to respond to the miracle power of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Still from Zambia, this time is from Brighton, Savita. Man of God, help us understand the following. Um, this is Matthews. Matthew 23, 9. Why do Christians call servants of God Papa? Well, again, not Matthew 23, 9. Say, do not call anyone your father on the earth. But you need to read the pretext and the post-text to be able to understand what Jesus was talking about. In the pretext, he talked about false prophets. So when Jesus said, do not call anyone your father, he was actually talking about false prophets. He wouldn't have said, you shouldn't call anyone your father. What about your biological parents? Are they not, is your biological father not your father? Why will he say you shouldn't call him a father? So he was making reference to false prophets. However, your pastor who feeds you the word of God and builds doctrine into you has the right 
to be a spiritual father or a papa. A father, a spiritual father, is not a title. It is responsibility. A father is one who builds doctrine into you and builds ministry out of you. That's why Brother Paul will say, though you have 10,000 instructors, yet you do not have many fathers. For I am your father. Through the gospel, I have begotten you. So that scripture was making reference contextually to false prophets. We stay on in Zambia and still from Brighton, Savita, Luke 23, 52 to 43. I don't understand why it should be 43 to 52. Did Jesus briefly go to paradise before appearing to his disciples towards his ascension? If he briefly went to paradise, well, well, the scripture didn't tell us. But of course we know that when Jesus rose from the dead, he must have, come, he must have passed through paradise to raise the Old Testament saints who were there by reason of promise we know. Yeah. Okay, still from Brighton, I think this is uh, where he, he or she signs off. It says, in prayer we say, I command spirits causing problems in my family to die. Now can these spirits die before judgment day? And I refer you to Revelations 2010. Spirits don't die. Whoever prays that prayer is just, you know, is just wallowing in ignorance. Spirits don't die. Spirits, you know, spirits are not supposed to die. So you can't kill them. That's why they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. Let's stay in Zambia. Two more so entries and then we're done. Okay, let's take this one from, um, what does it tell us his name? Okay, Gasto Musonda writes from Ndola, Zambia. Hello, Papa. Greetings to you. I want to thank you for your life in the body of Christ Jesus. I'm Gasto Musonda from Dola, Zambia. I've been following your teachings since January, and I've been looking for Power City Campus in Zambia. Where can I order your books to equip my ministry? I have a ministry called Gracia Church. Please, Papa, pray for me so that I might stand in boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your response to my message will be highly appreciated. We'll try and make sure you get a response. The person coordinating our campuses in the nation of Zambia is by the name Brother K. Brother K. But we'll try and make sure you're connected to him so he can help you. But we pray that you have boldness, you have utterance to make known the mystery of Christ and to speak the word of God boldly and make known Christ to your nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Uh, yes, Papa, amen. Uh, our last um, take from Zambia tonight, we've dwelt um, longer than necessary in Zambia, we need to move on, comes from Lusaka, the capital. From there, we fly out to other parts of Africa. My name is Tembo Masauso in Lusaka, Zambia. I've been truly blessed by your teachings and the great works you're doing through sharing Christ. I've come to understand Christianity in a very different way from what I used to, and I thank God that I have you left in my lifetime. Now, does the soul rest when someone dies? Please help me. I want more clarity on this. It depends on which soul. <laughs> one will rest, one will suffer. So it depends on which soul, actually. If you're, if you're in Christ, if you're born again, yes, you're already in rest, you continue resting in Christ. But if you're, not, if you're without Christ, there is no peace for the wicked. Okay. Papa, so we move to other parts of, of uh, Africa. Zimbabwe, here we come. Dear Papa, thank you for... Now, 60 days of glory. You have been such a, a huge um, blessing, it's a huge uh, impact in my life. I'm on learning and relearning every day. Glory to Jesus. Mr. Bush, you are the bomb. That's, That's right. You say. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and Bin so writing from Harare, Zimbabwe, says, My question, Papa, you mentioned in one of your teachings that Satan is in one location at a time and Satan is not everywhere. I need more clarity on this. Yeah, Satan can be everywhere. He's not omnipresent. He is a creation. Of God, so he can be everywhere. However, he has a network of demonic activities through which he tries to create an impression that is everywhere. But he cannot, that's why he goes about to and fro. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom? So he, he can't even devour everybody. There are a particular type of people he devours, and he has to seek for them, he has to move around. God does not move around. God is in one place and in every place at the same time. That's why he's omnipresent. Okay, in, in South Africa, we arrived now. And Nko um, from South Africa, your question is here. And that would be, will I be wrong, Papa, if I say after the 40 days of fast, think Jesus was tempted on our behalf that we believers may not be tempted by the devil? No, you are just uh, cross no, your own. <laughs> your, your own. <laughs> The Bible says, uh, he that endures temptation shall receive a crown. So believers are tempted and we will be tempted. Jesus' temptation was because he was a man. It further goes to establish his humanity. 
And so, still from Kusinachi in South Africa, who was Moses talking to face to face in Exodus? He was talking to an angel. Old Testament was angels. If you check uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 35 to 53, you will see that it was an interaction with angels, put in the burning bush and on Mount Sinai. And finally, from Kusinachi in South Africa, who sent those angels that gave Moses the commandments? Well, the, the angels that gave Moses the commandments, commandments, the Ten Commandments, were sent by God. But the laws of Moses were given by Moses, and Moses engaged the angels to walk with him because Israel made Moses their mediator. So you've got to be able to know the difference between the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses. And if you observe carefully, the Ten Commandments don't have causes, only blessings. But the law of Moses has causes. You see that? And if you observe, when Moses instructed them to take the Ark of the Covenant, the Ten Commandments were in the Ark, but the laws of Moses were attached to the Ark outside because it was not part of the Ten Commandments. Anyway, all of that is taught in my series on the two kinds of righteousness. The two kinds of righteousness. If you get that series, you will get all these details properly explained. Papa, let's move to Limpopo, still in South Africa, and our friend Patience is somewhere there. Greetings, Songul Bush and Dr. Damina. I'm particularly grateful and excited about the extension of the 30 Days of Glory up to until Revelation and knowledge grows big in our inside. Thank you so much, Papa, for availing yourself to minister the deep things of salvation that have been he he hidden to some of us for ages. My name is Patience from Limpopo, South Africa. My questions, Papa. You said deliverance, the movement from one kingdom to the other, from darkness to light. May you please help me understand why people who are saved and have been Christians for such a long time are still cast, uh, are still cast out demons from time to time as they continue to manifest. Does it mean that they were saved, they did not move from one kingdom to the other? They moved, but they found themselves in the hands of either fraudulent pastors or false prophets or pastors who don't know they are left from their right. And they're using them for experiment, making caricature of them, throwing them on the ground. Remember, the Bible says it is the doctrine that will determine the spirit in operation. He said the time shall come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. So they will heap up teachers with itching ears. And when those teachers come, they will give them doctrine of devils, seducing spirit, which will answer to doctrine of devils. So if you go to a church where the pastor is always talking about demons, always talking about devils, always talking about Satan, that pastor is exposing the atmosphere where all of you are under his authority to seduction. And when seduction begins in an atmosphere, because people there don't know much, the evil spirits will influence them. Then you find people screaming, falling, rolling on the floor, vomiting, and all of that. It is all a product of wrong doctrine that attracts evil spirits to you know, influence the people there who don't have knowledge. When you begin to grow in the sound knowledge of Christ, once you receive the gospel and you start growing, nobody, casts any, nobody messes around with you. You become stable. You're no more those to and fro or carried about with every wind of doctrine. So that's why you see all those manifestations. It is a situation of the blind leading the blind and all of them fall in a ditch. It's coming very close to 7.30 to the minute in Uyo, Akwaibum State, Nigeria. I am still listening to, uh, you know, 30 days of glory. That is now 60 days of glory. And we just started. I think this is day two yep. of, the Second day, day of, the, Second. of the New Testament. Okay, so still from patients in Limpopo, South Africa. By the way, I like the name Limpopo, you know. And, um, I've been there. Oh, beautiful Papa. place, very wow. beautiful. Limpopo. Yeah, it's a political, it's a political powerhouse. Oh my. Yeah, Lim, uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. Is that Limpopo? Is that Africa? Uh, Africa? Polokwane. Polokwane. Okay. I think Limpopo is around. Around Polokwane. Polokwane. Okay. Or something. Something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Because I know Blue Fountain is one of their capitals. Jo Jobok is one. Another one. Cape Town is There's Pretoria. One. Yes, it's Pretoria. But then there is this uh, Polokwane. Okay. Polokwane okay. is a is a, a, is a powerhouse. It's okay. a beautiful place. Okay. Look it. Then, why would Jesus say to his disciples, to them, parables are meant for them to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to some, parables are there so that they may not see and not hear. Is there a certain group of people who must not know the secrets of the kingdom <laughs> of God? And why not everyone? Jesus spoke in parables because the people lacked the capacity to understand. So since they lacked the capacity to understand, he spoke to them in parables. 
But then his disciples, when he brought them in, he explained the parables to them because the disciples had faith in him. But the other people didn't believe in him and there's no way he could help them. He tried to communicate, but they couldn't take it. So it was not like he was selecting who to show. It was the people's capacity that determined the mode of communication with which Jesus communicated with them. Just as I round off with patients in Limpopo, South Africa, I would um, tell you, I can begin to take my first round of calls. First Peter, uh, one, two, what is that sprinkling of uh, Jesus' blood, Papa? In first Peter, what? One, two. Give me first Peter, one, two. Oh, uh, obedience and sprinkling of the blood. That is what Jesus did in his high priestly ministry. The sprinkling of the blood was simply the shedding of the blood in the Holy of Holies. That's what it was. And he did that for us when he went to heaven upon his resurrection and came back the same day and entered the room without window and door because that was the consummation of all of his work, sacrificial work, and giving us an acceptance right at the majesty on high. Papa, let's just fly around South Africa a little longer, then we move out to another part of the continent. Now to Cape Town, Lindo Mgoma Rise. Greetings again, Mr. Bush and Father Damina. Thank you for your crystal clear answers. A few days ago, it has built me up even more. I'm firing from all cylinders. My question, what's the difference between the Antichrist and 666? Difference between the Antichrist and 666 is the same thing. One is figurative and one is literally communicated. Let's move to Pretoria, Philly Sitole in Pretoria, um, writes now and says, Good evening, Papa and Mr. Bush. I want to take this opportunity to compliment Mr. Bush for making Sotera 7 a blaze and, of course, looking good always. Nice outfit, sir. Keep it up. Papa, thank you for redeeming me from the jaws of ignorance and, and religion. I appreciate your unending desire to push this gospel to the utmost parts of the world. Thank you for your consistency in doctrine and truth. Well, my question is, is it okay to post my business and selling of goods on my timeline that I'm also using to preach the gospel? Thank you so much, Papa, and a man of the moment, Mr. Bush, your beloved daughter, Philly Sitole in Pretoria, South Africa. Yep, Philly, uh, bless you. It's okay. I mean, you make the choice. You know what you want to do with your Facebook page. I have decided that my Facebook page is strictly for the preaching of the gospel, so that's all you find there. But, you know, you can decide you want to put business, you want to put gospel. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just what you want. Okay. I'm told that we had a call about that has uh, moved on. Let's move from Pretoria quickly, quickly to East London. East London is still in South Africa. And QG in Tioko writes, Grace to you and peace. I'm listening to your series, 30 Days of Glory, now 60 Days, and I find it quite interesting. You argue that a preacher must not impose his opinion on the scripture. I, I agree with that in full. Because that's the truth. However, at the same time, you state that our holiness cannot make us see God. But the book of Hebrews 12, 14 states, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. Please explain your argument with this scripture. Papa, that answer comes right on the heels of this caller. Hello. Are you there? Okay, Papa, I think we'll just continue until we have the caller yes. come back. Yes. Hebrews chapter 4, is it 4? Hebrews uh, 12, 14. Hebrews 12, 14. What you just did by your question, you just imposed your opinion on the scriptures actually. That's what you did. Follow all men with peace and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It's not talking about seeing the Lord. Look at the pretext. Give me verse 12, 12, 12, 12. Hebrews 12, 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Next verse, 13. And make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Talking about conduct. Next verse. Follow peace with all men, conduct, and holiness, without which the people around you will not see the Lord in you. He was dealing with conduct. He was not talking about seeing God. He was talking about people around you seeing God by virtue of your conduct. That's what he was talking about. Okay, last uh, entry from South Africa in a moment. Right now, this call. Hello. Are you here? This caller, do we have the time? Okay, when you come on, we, we can take that. Papa, let's go to South Africa, Cape Town again. Good afternoon, good evening, Dr. Damina. My name is God Angel, prophet of the Lord, your son in the Lord. It's been like several years I've been listening to your teachings and they have improved my knowledge of God through Christ to the benefit of knowing my identity in Christ. 
my position in Christ and my inheritance in Christ at the point even of writing a book and organizing back to school services where we bring people back to the understanding of these fundamental things as believers. But I have a concern, Dr. Damina. It's been years that I'm dealing with this in ministry. God using me according to Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, writing and teaching and preaching about this for years. And I'd like to know your take and revelation about it. I've dealt with sev several kinds of things, received testimonies even from former witches who have been saved. And Paul in the Bible spoke about this, but you seem not to emphasize much on it, while it seems to be the daily reality of the Christian, that is spiritual warfare. Prophet, God, angel, your son from Cape Town, South Africa. This caller, hello. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Anyway, where you're calling from, finally. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Yes, go ahead. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Papa, good evening, sir. Mr. Bruce, thank you. Good evening. Me. Um, I'm calling from Lagos. My name is Chris Jenner. Okay, Chris, go ahead. All right. Uh, Papa, I'm so excited to um, have this chat with you this evening. I've been blessed by your messages. I've been following you over the years. And I'm only looking for an opportunity to meet you one-on-one -on -one so you will lay your hand on me. All right. Papa, I have two questions for you this evening. Okay. One is that... Um, can one become a Christian after you die? That is one. And then secondly, do all religions have the same goal? This is my question. Thank you. Wow, Chris, I can tell that you've not been following me closely. Because if you have, you won't even ask those questions. Well, first question. After a man dies, there's no opportunity for him to receive Christ anymore. The, the only opportunity you have is now while you are alive. Once a man dies, it's over. So whatever choice you want to make for eternity, it is while you are alive. You either choose to spend eternity with God or you choose to spend eternity with Satan. The choice is while you are alive. The moment a man dies, the curtains are drawn, it's over. Second question is, uh, do all religions worship the same God? No, they don't. Our God is Jesus Christ. Jesus is our God. Other religions have their own gods. And I have good news for you. The gods of other religions, most of them are dead and in the grave waiting for Jesus. History has it, only Jesus died and rose the third day, and, and you know, Jesus is coming again, and he's going to judge the world in righteousness. So we don't have the same God. Our God is Jesus Christ. Let's go back to you, your son, your uh, spiritual son. Yeah, the prophet. Yes, uh -huh. he talked about uh, yeah. spiritual what, warfare. What you're doing is, you're reading experiences, people's experiences into scripture. If you continue like that, you're not uh, going to do proper ministry you will end up doing native doctor or something. Because real ministry is subjecting experiences to the authority of God's word. So, witchcraft is not the gospel. The gospel is the message of Christ. We don't preach people's experiences. Neither do we deny them. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is the good news of what Jesus has done in his death, burial, and resurrection. When people receive that good news, that good news begins to correct their experiences and begins to shape their life to come into unison with God's purpose and the finished work of Christ. So stop preaching experiences and stop letting people determine what you preach. Preach what the scripture instructs you to preach, which is the word of what Christ has done in his death, burial, and resurrection. When people receive it and believe it, it starts correcting them. That's why we don't preach experiences and we don't preach stories. We just preach what Christ has done. That is where the power is unto salvation. Another caller. Hello. Are you here? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Where are you calling from? Yes, I am Bansi. I'm calling from YouTube. Okay. Here in Akwaibu. Okay. Hello? Go ahead. We can hear you. Just go ahead. Okay. My question are uh, two. And uh, first of all, let me appreciate uh, Dr. Damina for the good work he, he has been doing. I've been following you very carefully. Thank you. My first question is, uh, all this while we've not had any other preacher like Dr. Damina 
Uh, why should it be only him? I thought we should equally have other people through whom the Holy Spirit equally is giving this teaching. You that can, is number one. You can be one since no. you've been following me very keenly. You two can start. You can be one. <laughs> okay, my, my second question. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Uh -huh. It's uh, in the uh, first Corinthians chapter 11 where it's he has thought out about uh, the Holy Communion issue. Yes. My question is, was Paul uh, giving us this information as what we have to do, or he was reporting on what Jesus Christ has done already? He was talking about what Jesus Christ has done already and using it to correct the Corinthian church from doing, you know, from operating out of love, where they come to love feast, and some will eat, some will not eat, so he was showing them that what Christ has done is for everybody. It's not for some selected few. That's why he made reference to Brother Luke's account of the broken body and the blood. And he used that as an analogy to show how the body of Christ ought to function so we can gain maximally the benefits of what Jesus did. That's a summary of it. But if you follow the teachings very well, that's what I've been explaining for some days now. I'd like yes. to thank that caller. We look forward to having another caller before we round off the first uh, round of callers. Jeremy from Meru County, Kenya, as we arrive, Kenya. I've been following your teachings on YouTube for some years now, Papa. Your teachings have changed and reset my heart and beliefs. But there is this particular teaching during season seven of Soteria. Okay, that should be Soteria season seven day 15 where you taught about holy communion as is commonly referred to in second corinthians 10 16 to 17 paul talks about breaking bread and taking the cup after blessing it this is like they ate and drank literally is it right therefore to eat and drink as long as one understands that christ's body and blood is the reality because these people were literally blessing and breaking it please make it clear to me that is uh, jeremy one yes. still jeremy two to come yes please make sure you break and eat in your house keep eating and drinking it doesn't change anything eat breakfast eat lunch eat dinner pray and eat and drink that's what it is it's nothing but you can't call that the passover because the passover was a special meal specially prepared everything was special it was a feast the one brother paul was talking about was not the passover remember i thought there's a difference between passover breaking of bread and the lost supper they are not the same so go back to the teachings and listen to the differences then you will understand that what paul was saying was not for us to eat and drink rather for us to understand that what was communicated in the old testament which jesus joined them in luke to do was to point to what christ will do which he has done and today we take the reality of it spiritually through the teaching and the preaching of god's word this caller hello hello Thank you for joining us. You know where you're calling from. Yeah, this is uh, Pastor Chris Israel from River City. My own pastor. Yeah, this is your son. Uh, I'm really appreciating God for what God is using to do in the body of Christ. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Yeah, I have two questions to ask. Her. Okay. This is uh, a, a issue of uh, a tithing. The tithing began from Abraham. I think uh, also the proposition of the flesh begins from Abraham. That's the tithe. Then my, 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 second, my second question is, uh, this is a serious people always have that they have a dream. Seeing their late father coming to bless them in their dream. Is that real? Okay, people that see their late father, it's, it's necromancy, it's, it's, a, it's a divination, it's sorcery. It's not right. If you see such things, just stand up and rebuke it and, and tell it out of your room in Jesus' name. It's not right. Now let's go back to your first question. All the blessings you ever need, you have them in Christ. You don't need any, any dead man coming to bless you. Christ is more than enough. Now, back to your first question. On tithing, we, we, see the point is people are not understanding. Why we talk about tithe is because tithe means tenth. Tenth means ten percent. If people in the Old Testament were given 10%, we are under the blood of Christ. We shouldn't be given 10%. We should give over and above the 10% to show that what Christ has done for us, we understand it. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. That's simply what we're saying. Generosity. 
It's a quarter to the top of the hour. That means we have less than 15 minutes to round off this particular edition of uh, 60 Days of Glory, day two. Okay, or day 32. Okay, I'm told that I have another caller. This should be the last for now. Hello. Are you here? Hello? Okay, so we, we can just call. I'll, I'll come for another round of callers, perhaps in another five minutes. Let's just round off with Jeremy in Meru County, Kenya. And he says, he continues now, in Second Timothy 2.15, Paul says that we have one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And in Hebrews, it's also referred to as a man. All these epistles were written when Jesus had already ascended to heaven. When Stephen was about to give up his spirit in us, he said that he saw heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Therefore, Jesus is referred to as man in heaven. Is it proper, therefore, Papa, to refer to Jesus and, and, and God as you commonly teach? Yeah, Jesus is God. And God has decided to reveal himself in man. So we know God in man. Simple. Okay, from Kenya, let's go to Cameroon. And in Cameroon, Charlotte writing, Good evening, Papa and Mr. Bush. Thank you for the great job you both are doing. Papa, please, what are the keys of the kingdom according to Matthew 16, 19? Thanks in advance for answering my question. Keys of the kingdom is access to the realities that the kingdom of God makes available to the believer. Realities. Access to those realities. That's the key of the kingdom. Okay. Let's uh, now proceed. Um, I don't know. We should quickly go to outside the... The, the, the continent. Okay, let's just take this last one from Africa, then we round off. And that is Lesetho. I'm Clara from Lesetho, Papa. According to the scripture, Jesus lives inside of a believer and they are one. They are in union. They are in fellowship and they are inseparable. A believer's body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God has all the answer to defeat the devil and the same power a believer possesses. At times, a believer gets suppressed by the devil for a long time, struggles to get breakthrough. Why does that happen, Papa? Does that mean that sometimes Jesus watches us suffering intentionally, putting us to test? Well, you know, Jesus has put the devil under your authority. And Jesus will not overtake or overthrow the devil to come and be exercising your authority for you. So you will have to grow in knowledge and take charge and exercise authority over the devil. And if you let the devil, he will rob all of his nonsense on you. That's why the Bible in Ephesians says, neither you, neither give room to the devil. So you are the one to stop the devil and you're the one to allow the devil. And it will only work, your authority will only work based on knowledge. So that's why you're learning, that's why you're growing, so you come to a place of knowledge, so you can effectively exercise authority and keep the devil where he belongs, where your life and circumstances are concerned. And Clara in Lesetho tries to explain, says, Papa, I ask that because in Acts 26, 14, 15, Jesus asked Saul, Saul, why dost thou prosecute me or persecute me? And for a very long time, Christians were suffering in the persecutions of Saul. Why was Jesus silent before? Well, Jesus wasn't silent. If you observe, Jesus speaking to Saul, Saul was in response to prayer. We have to pray. Every time you see an intervention of God, it is in response to the prayer of believers. When we pray, we create an enabling environment for the supernatural to go to work. If you don't pray, you limit the operation of the supernatural. So when we pray, then we create an environment for the supernatural to go to work. And that's when you begin to see interventions. That's when you begin to see manifestations. So that's why we give ourselves to prayer and we pray fervently. So we can see the manifestations of these things that God has already provided for us in Christ Jesus, including intervening in situations of persecution. We pray. We're heading out of uh, Africa. We're heading straight to the Americas. Canada is the next port of call for the road. We take this one. Solo 114 doesn't tell us where it's writing from, so we can take this from the air. Bet Niger is a game of chance. So, Lord, the believers live by faith and not by chance. If we believers play the game, are we not depending on luck instead of faith, Papa? Well, you go to work whether you have faith or not, and they pay your salary at the end of the month because you worked. Same thing. Canada, here we come. Fabrice Iram is in Canada. He says, Papa, please explain and teach me what the parable of the ten virgins means in Matthew 25. Jesus was just telling them, I came, but you don't know I have come. The wise ones were those who knew he has come. The foolish ones were the ones who didn't know he was come. So it was a way of him revealing himself to those people, using parables to make them know I'm here, 
since he couldn't speak to them in literal so that's what what the parable of the ten virgins is it's just that i am here among you people i am the husband man all of you have been waiting for now i have come only five know i am here the five don't know i am here that's what he meant so all the parables were to reveal him to the people to whom he came who didn't know he was the one okay from canada we're hitting back to home to nigeria first we need to go through uh it should be a stopover in Europe, that is London, and here we come. Nikki, back on the line. Dear Pastor Bush and Dr. Papa Domi Damina, thanks for your labor of love in the body of Christ. Questions, could you please clarify First Peter 3, 10 to 11, who was this admonition directed to, believers or non-believers? First Peter 3, 3, 10 to 11. 10 to 11. First Peter 3, 10 to 11. I'm going to read it for you. 3, 10 to 11, it says... Uh, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips, that they speak no guy. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensure it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. He was talking about the believer. He was just talking about the conduct of a believer. That's what James practically was talking about. And that's what Peter also spent some time to talk about, the conduct of the believer. So that the believer will speak the right words, live the right lifestyle so he can enjoy his life on earth here among human beings. Studio, we can take our last set of calls tonight, even as I round off in London, so that we can fly straight to Nigeria. Nick is still. It was recorded in First Samuel that David killed Goliath, Papa. Would you say that God empowered David to kill Goliath? No. That not. looks like a trap, Papa. Uh, so if you say yes, say okay. Uh, so God is a killer. Uh, uh, Nick I, I know, I know the trick. Neki. I know the trick, Mr. Bush. Neki, thou shalt not tempt the man of God. <laughs> God didn't empower David to kill Goliath. David just has skills in shooting catapult. And one of those his skills got to the head of Goliath. Just like a nation has enough military power, they take on a weaker nation and defeat them. You can't say God did that. So all those are activities within human beings. Okay, we told that we have a caller. Can I just take this one? Hello. Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Where are you calling from? Okay, my name is Jesus. I'm calling from Ibeshiku. Go ahead, Jesus. Okay. Um, I want to say, I want to thank Papa for in teaching. I've been following him for, for about three years now. And I want to tell the people that uh, what he's preaching is a good gospel, is the gospel of Christ. Because I've explained so many things since I started following him. Okay, the first word that I try to, or every time I dream, like I see I'm wearing um, my energy school uniform. But when I started hearing his gospel, I've not seen those kind of a thing again. I declare my faith in Christ and always pray and then find out that so many things that happened before is not happening again. So I want to tell the people that Papa is preaching the gospel, the true gospel of Christ. Thank you and bless you. Okay, so uh, Papa, we're back in Nigeria. I think so we should fly from Nigeria straight uh, from London straight into Nigeria or can we try Ghana okay let's just do this from Ghana as we over around the natural airspace glory be to God Papa you are a blessing to my generation great grace upon you Papa we love you more and more question please is there any word or scripture that we should celebrate Christmas or not celebrate Christmas because some pastors argue this issue in church please take us through John watching you live from Cape Coast Ghana, happy 27 years in the broadcast media. Mr. Michael Bush, we celebrate you more and more. Glory. Glory. There's a, there's a call for A caller? Me. Okay, I'll just take this caller. Hello. Okay. Yeah, so let's stay with him. There's no scripture for celebrating Christmas, and there's no scripture for not celebrating Christmas. So if you like, celebrate. If you like, don't celebrate. It doesn't mean anything. It's called non-essential where your Christian life is concerned. Okay, we come to Nigeria. Finally, a well-known clergyman in Nigeria, Papa, last Sunday advised members of his congregation against giving to people who do not pay tithe. He cited an instance when he gave somebody 40,000 naira and that his favor ceased for a while and when he was wondering what was happening to him, that is a session of favor, God told him that he gave the money to a person who didn't use to pay tithe. Papa, please, is this biblical? <laughs> that, one, that one sounds like magic, Papa. I feel like laughing. <laughs> magic. That sounds like magic. <laughs> Oh, oh my mm. God give it to the good, mm. to the bad, to the thankful, to the unsay you didn't pay tight. You lost favor. You need to check which demon or which spirit he's been paying that tight to. Because if he's the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't wait for you to give to him to give to you. He gives to you first. And uh, you know, 
whatever you do is just in response to what he has already done. Our last caller tonight. Are you there? Hello. Yes. Fire on. Good evening, Papa. Evening. Evening. Good evening, Papa. Evening. I'm in, in. Go ahead. We can hear you. It's gone. Still there? Okay. All right. That one just came to say Papa good evening. So I, I, <laughs> this entry says, please explain Jude 1 9 for me. Jude, Jude 1 9. 9. Put it up for me. Jude chapter 1, verse 9. Just one chapter. Jude 1 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. Uh, you know, it's just that, that situation where the devil wanted to claim the body of Moses and the angel of the Lord rebuked the devil to, to, to get out of that place, you know. Because So that's what it is. There's no much on it. Okay, Papa Boronu is our next step, uh, next uh, port of call, this caller. Hello. That's our last caller tonight, really. Are you there? Okay, so we're done with calls tonight. We're done with calls tonight. We're done with calls tonight. Thank you. Okay, so, um, Papa, my name is Solomon J. Faransa from Medugri. I've been following your teaching and I learned so much from you. My question is in the book of Daniel 3.25. Sir, how did Nebuchadnezzar know that the fourth man in the fire is the son of God? Because at that time, Jesus had not yet been revealed. It was an assumption. He didn't know. And he wasn't even right because that fourth man was not the son of God. He was an angel. Question um, is the book, that's the second question, is the book of um, Psalms 122, verse 1, sir. Where is David referring to as the house of Lord, because the house of Lord was built by Solomon? No, David was actually referring to the born-again man. He wanted to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, which today your body is the temple of the Lord forever. So he was actually saying he wants to be like us, he wants to be born again. That was his prayer in Psalm 23. Within those states, we come. Hello, Papa. Thanks for all you do for the body of Christ. I was following your question and answer session live on Facebook. Someone from Delta asked a question about the tree and serpent in the Garden of Eden being figurative. You answered in the affirmative, but didn't go further. Apparently, you've dealt extensively on the subject, and I missed it. I would really love you to explain more on that, sir, as this is the first time I have heard this. Looking forward to hearing from you, Pastor Ifani OJ is in Benin. Yeah, it was it, it, the serpent. There's nothing like the serpent now. There's nothing like the serpent. It's a personality. The serpent is a personality, and that's where the book of First Corinthians 11 3 and 4. I think 11 3 and 4 says the serpent, which is the devil. Revelation 12 also calls the serpent the devil, so it was metaphorical. Okay, good evening, Dr. Ebel Damina. My name is Edimek. I'm eight years old. I'm writing from Putakot. I want to ask how can I tell when it is God that's speaking to me and not my mind? Please, could you write a book on that, please? Edimek, uh, okay, no problem. But we already have a book if you get our book on the Holy Spirit. That will help you a lot. Prayer in the spirit, it will help you with a lot of explanation. From Putakot, it's just 10 minutes flight, a short one to you, so we we'll quickly do that. Dear um, uh, Reverend Damina, it is docilely taught by Brother Paul that we are saved by grace through faith apart from works. For James in James 2.21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? He teaches that faith alone is not sufficient, that you must add works. He said faith without works is dead. Please, how do you resolve these contradictions? Well, he was just talking about conduct. He wasn't talking about salvation. It's conduct he was dealing with. That was from Gideon, Etem Ekwe, in Okobo, Akwaibon. Say, Papa, I'm excited uh, for about two, three nights. We slept outside. Yes. Tonight we're going to spend it in Uyo, Nigeria. 60 Days of Glory uh, studio crew, thank you. Pastor Dr. Godisman and members of our back road 2 district. Pastor I.G. Equere, cameraman, sound engineer, studio hands, everyone. Joins me, Michael Bush, to ask Papa to bless us. Mr. Bush, what a blessing tonight. We've had a blast. Now, listen to me, all pastors in Akwaibom State. If you're a pastor in Akwaibom State or you're a church leader, a pastor or a church leader who has been following these teachings and you have questions, things you want clarity, I'm doing an exclusive meeting for pastors in Akwaibom State this Thursday. This Thursday by 11 o'clock at Power City. If you're interested in attending, call the following number. 080-60-666-800. I repeat. 080-60-666-800. On Thursday this week, by 11 o'clock, I'm meeting with pastors who want to ask questions or you desire to be helped. On Thursday this week, here at Power City, 98 Wanibar Road, 
Uyo. I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm, it's going to be explosive. Now listen, we look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, we're on on inspiration this evening by 8 o'clock. Be blessed and have a good evening. Good night from you, Nigeria. Praise God. 60 Days of Glory. This is 60 Days of Glory, a Power City International Initiative. Coming to you from Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. When you are born by God, you cannot enter God's mouth and say, I don't want to be a Christian. Bring me out as an unbeliever. Once you're born of God, you're born. This is 60 Days of Glory. To be a part of it, you can call 0806 800 9939 or send a message to 0708 501 4746. 60 Days of Glory, the revelation of Jesus Christ beyond shadows.